welcome back to T-Technology. This video is working with R. So first we're gonna download R. This video is gonna be a little different. I'm gonna do a lot less talking and more of just chapters going over each facet, starting with variables and data types. So with variables, it's temporary storage spaces, similar to Rust. So one example, be numerical so we're going to create a variable for nums print that out by the way these are variable data types the second one is a character next we have logical data types this is things like true and false values. And then finally, we have complex data types. So that'd be working with imaginary numbers. Next, let's work with operators. So some operators are arithmetic operators, relational operators, and logical operators. And here's some more relational. So that would be things like the equals equals or x equals 16. You could do a not equal. This is x is less than. Here's some logical operators. That's basically just true and false. So the and sign would be and. I'm in a one single bar is an or. Vectors. Vectors are linear homeogenesis data structures, which basically just means that there's one element and one type. An example would be for artists. You could also do for salaries. Some things to know when it comes to vectors is when what takes precedence, and we will showcase that in the code, is if you have a vector that has you know uh, one type so for instance has the type of num numeric characters will take precedence so if you have multiple characters and multiple nums in a vector when you get the class of the vector it will just say that the type is of type character and it will turn everything into a type. So unlike vectors, lists are heterogeneous data structures. This will be this will be a lot longer than the vector series because this will be showcasing a multiplicity of list and now we're going to start working with real data so because the grammys just happened we're going to be working with grammy data so the first thing that we're doing is creating a list for some of the grammy winners or some of the top people that won grammys uh, this weekend or i should say last weekend so as you can see in our list we have 
Taylor Swift, two, because she took home two Grammys. Miley Cyrus, two, because she took home two Grammys. And we print it out. We'll showcase our list as following. And another difference between list and vectors is that if we print out the class of our Grammy artist, we get a list instead of the type. So now we're creating another list, but this is now for the stars. Again, I'm gonna be doing more coding than talking in this video because it will be going over all of the concepts that you will need to be successful in our programming. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell as I make videos every single week and I'm trying to make videos every single day, both shorts and long form content. Take the red pill with me as we move on to matrices in R. So a matrix is a little bit more complicated than a list, but not as complicated as a data frame. So as you can see with a matrix, we can define our rows and our columns. You can't do that with a list. You can also set the dim But now with our matrix, we're creating a lot larger pieces of data, right? As you know, as a data analyst, you want to work with more and more pieces of data. So matrices are better when you work with larger data sets. So with this data set, we're working with all of the genres of the Grammys. Well, a lot of the, gra the genres for the Grammys, we had jazz, country, rap, rock, alternative rock, EDM dance music, pop music. So, you know, we, we try to touch on as many of, you know, gospel. We, we're trying to touch on as many of the gospel, or sorry, as many of the Grammy genres as possible. Again, as you work more with R and you work with even larger data sets, especially with more numbers, because this is more character based data, we work with more num based data, and we'll get to it later on in the video. We work with more vector, more scatter plots, and <clears throat> we're using more things like mean and min, and the max value and the range function because we're working with more statistical pieces of data. Here, we're working with more num-based pieces of data, so it's better to look at list vectors, matrices, arrays, which we'll get to, as well as data frames. As you can see here, we're printing out our matrix. And because we set the dim so high, we have a lot more columns than we need to. Or, I'm sorry, a lot more rows than we need to. So setting the dim is very important in creating your matrix. See here, we have a little bit more of an efficient matrix, but still 
we'd opt to have more columns and less rows. This is how we would index a matrix. So we would set the name of the row and the name of the column, or the num of the row and the num of the column. So moving on to the array, in R, arrays are multi-dimensional data structures that can store elements of the same data type arranged in one or more dimensions, while a matrix are specifically two-dimensional arrays with columns where elements must be of the same data type. And let's build our array. We set our dim. And as you see here, and here's our, our array. array. Again, all of this information is based off the Grammys for 2024. And if you notice, the way that we set our dim will determine the size of our array.
on to data frames. In R, a data frame is a two-dimensional heterogeneous data structure that stores data in rows and columns similar to a table in a database or spreadsheet. Each column can contain data of different types such as numeric, character, factor, or logical, and each row represents an observation or case. Data frames are commonly used for data manipulation like we're doing here. So really what I'm trying to get at is we're learning the basics first. So first we're learning variables and data types, then we're learning a little bit of man more manipulation techniques with vectors, with matrix, and with a list, and with an array, and now we're really getting into data analysis with the data frame that we built here. So if you ever work with Python, it's similar to a Python data frame. The difference is, is that Python data frames are a little bit cleaner when you build it with Jupyter Notebook. Other than that, you're getting a lot of information. A couple things to note when it comes to syntax. What you can do is create via an arrow function like we did above with the DF or whatever you want to name your data frame. That is actually very helpful when it comes to work with functions when it comes to our data frames. Or we can just do data.frame and create the data frame itself with the names of our columns like we did on the lower example. So it really depends on what you want to do with your data frame. I feel like if you're working with a large data set that is numbers that are a little bit more dynamic than just result data like we have here, then you might want to opt to create actual variable names for your data frame, which will make it easier to work with the data that you're trying to manipulate. In this case, because we're really only working with record data, and when we get to working with like functions like our head or tail, you know, structure and functions like that, when it comes to data frames, we are, it's okay because everything is just record data, so everything's really just gonna be character-based it's okay to work with just creating it as a DF.
as you can see here's our next data frame for album of the year and we're creating a final data frame again these are all subjective numbers when it comes to rankings based on just what i saw and based on just how i view the popularity of the genres in my personal opinion so if anyone sees this don't get offended if you feel like someone that you really interested in was not in this top 10 list for the grammys so i like to opt with taylor swift number one i went with miley cyrus number two scissor number three boy genius number four killer mike number five paramore number six metallica number seven even though they only won one grammy Billie Eilish, number eight, even though she only won one Grammy. And then, obviously, I'm going to throw Chris Stapleton in there. I'm not a big country fan, so if you are a big country fan, you probably would have him higher on the list than people like, you know, Boy George or SZA. I'm sorry, Boy Genius, not Boy George. Boy Genius. But that's just my personal opinion based on the kind of music that I'm into. And that's really how to create data frames with R. So moving away from our Grammys data, here are conditionals. So conditionals are very similar to you know, any other if statement with Python or some other kind of if else language like JavaScript that you've used in the past. It's very simple. You know, you're gonna use the if statement. You if you want to make it a multi-component, you would create an if else if else statement, and then you print out your responses. It is not very difficult. We're setting our profit margin at 3.0 and we're just basically using a logical operator saying that if profit margin is greater than zero, then we're gonna print out a response. And our response is you are in the green. And finally, let's talk about functions and some other important things that you will utilize when working with R. So first thing, we created a whole new data frame, just random data of profit and revenue. So let's create a scatter plot. So first, let's get our X value, which in this case is gonna be profit. Next, let's get our Y value, which is our sales. If you've ever worked with Jupyter Notebook or Python, you can also scatter plot in Python as well. I think this is actually simpler to create a scatter plot, has less steps than with Python. This is a pretty simple plot system. Plot your X value, plot your Y value, and then we'll see in a minute. You're gonna call the plot function. And then we're just gonna put our values in there. 
and bam, we have our plot. Again, when you're working with larger data sets, this is very, very valuable. We just created data sets here, so we really don't have much. But as you get to larger pieces of data, your scatter plot will be more robust and that can help you in making decisions, working with AI, creating regression lines, creating statistical lines, etc. Scatter plots are very, very important. Actually, if this video gets 150 likes, I will create a full shorts tutorial that is 100% on just working with scatter plots, creating regression lines and statistical models based on a scatter plot. Next, we have our data frames and we're working with simple functions. So some functions are, the first one was the head function, which gets the first five values. Then we have the tail function, which gets the last five. Next, we have our min and our max function. Here we have our mean function. Again, we had to create a, a whole entire different data frame because a lot of these functions have to do with numbers instead of characters. And our Grammys data was more to do with characters. And then finally, we have our range function. And the way that all this is done is you call the name of the data frame with the function attached to it. Finally, let's work with loops. Again, if you've worked with for loops in the past or while loops in the past within another language, it is similar syntax. So we're just going to create a vector. That has 100 values in it. We see the one dot dot 100. That means that we're going to be looping through 100 values. We're going to print I in the name of our vector. And we print it out. We're going to get all of these 100 values as you can see. So it's similar to Ruby in that way where you have the two dots that essentially includes the number 100. And we work with another one where we're essentially creating a loop that adds 10 to each value. But that's simple looping in our programming. And finally, to conclude, you can also loop through names or characters. It's just a different looping process. As you can see, when we run our loop, we're actually going to run the name of the characters those multiple times within our loop. And we'll run our loop in a second and you'll see. Well, after we fix our error, and I could have printed I as well. Make sure to subscribe for more.